welcome to Disastrously Domestic. I'm Jessica, and this is my kitchen. I brought you here because I thought it would be fun to bring you with me while I make candles. Uh, I've done this a couple times, so I'm, I'm not an expert, but I figured I'd just show you step by step how I do it. And you know, if you want to make candles at home, you can. Yay, candles. Yay, domesticity. I don't know if it's really domestic, but, yeah, whatever. I file it under that, so. Okay, let's get started. Alright, so supplies. I'm going to be using four wicks with clips. I'm going to have four mason jars. These are half pint jars, something like that. 150 milliliter is the top line, which is not the top of the jar, so I don't know, whatever. I have a vanilla fragrance oil, and I have a turquoise liquid dye. As well as, of course, soy wax flakes. And this I'm very excited about is a herb mix that I picked up at a local shop and it looks like it has sage and roses and some kind of a resin maybe it's frankincense or myrrh I don't know something but it smells very magical and actually it is a spell mix I got it at a Wiccan shop um, I'm not Wiccan but I knew that they would have something like this and it smells amazing so Yes. Yay. That is going to go into my candles as well. And so the first thing you do is you're going to want to adhere your clip to the bottom of your container. And I, you know, you could use hot glue. They say to use wax adhesive, but I don't really know what it is. So I didn't use that. Um, so you stick it into the bottom of your container, centered. And then the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to grab a dowel of some kind and make sure it's wide enough to sit on top of your container. So what you're going to want to do is wrap your wick around your dowel in the, so that your wick is tight and straight up and down, perp perpendicular to the dowel. <laughs> So hold it tight and then just wrap it around a bunch of times. I crisscross it every once in a while to get it nice and tight. But don't pull so hard that you break your adhesive at the bottom because then you have to start all over again and that is no fun. So get it on there and since it's wax it sticks to itself, which is nice, and there you go, and that's what it looks like when it's ready. So you do that with all your containers. I'm doing four today, and I have them ready right here. And that's my only short dowel. I have really long dowels. Uh, they're actually skewers. So hopefully they won't get in the way too much, but we'll see. Okay, so next I'm gonna set up my double boil system. And it's very complicated. No, it's not. It's a pot filled eh, a quarter of the way with water and a Pyrex that I will then set inside the water, thusly. And so when I turn on my heat, the water around it will boil, heating the wax that I put into the Pyrex. So, okay, that's that. Now, next, you're going to want your wax. I am using soy wax flakes. They look like this. You can also buy soy wax in block form or in little beads, but the flakes melt really quickly, so that's why I like those. Now, how much wax do you need? That's the big question. I don't have 
a scientific method to anything that I do. So I got a jar, same jar as the ones that I prepped. And I'm going to do four jars. So I'm going to take four heaping scoops. I'm going to compress it as much as I can in there of the flakes. So I'm going to do four that are like that. And I'm going to put them in the Pyrex, which I put in the water. And I should not have done that yet, but never mind. And I'm going to do that four times. I'll chase you down. Good. Actually, <laughs> actually, I'm not going to do that four times because I can only fit two into my Pyrex. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, that's a very full Pyrex. I don't advise this, but we're going to go with it. <laughs> okay, so start your heat. And then as it heats up, it's going to melt the wax in the Pyrex. And once it melts and is all liquidy, we can remove it from the heat and then we'll add our dyes and our fragrance. So, yay. Okay, so it's been a little while and you can see that it's starting to melt a little bit. And look how much it shrunk down. <laughs> it was like almost overflowing and now it isn't anymore. So we might need to add, I might go ahead and add more wax to this now. All right, so all of my wax is finally dissolved. It's about 20 minutes later. I continued to add more wax to my mix. So you can see how full it is. Um, this is what I estimate I'll need to fill my four jars. We'll see if that ends up being the case because, you know, science. Math. No good. No good at math. So, this is very hot. Extremely hot. So don't do this and pick it up, you know. Just don't. So, get something that you can get that out of there with. Like an oven mitt. And I'm just going to pull this right out of the heat and put it onto my countertop which is tile. Uh, if you don't have a tile countertop and it's linoleum or whatever people have on their counters, you might want to put a hot pad of some sort underneath it. But yes, it's extremely hot, so just, you know, don't do what I'm doing right now. You can touch it with your hands because that's stupid. Don't do this. Don't do this. See this? Don't do this. Ow. Don't do that. No, really, don't do that. That actually hurt. Okay. So, I've never actually dyed my wax before, and I've never added artificial fragrance to it, and I've also never added herbs. <laughs> so we'll see how this goes. It should be very fun. Um, yeah, let's just do it. Let's just do it. So this is my turquoise liquid dye. I'm just going to eyeball this and see it does say that after you use the dye, you want to wash your hands with soap and water. And I'm like, well, yeah, of course you do. As I open it and it just gets everywhere. Oh, sweet baby Jesus. Oh boy, what a disaster. Got a little squeezy drop review. And what does this say? Maybe I should read the box. Let's read the box. What do you think? Full bottle of dye will color up to four pounds. This is not four pounds. For medium shade, use 0.1 fluid ounces in one pound of melted wax. Okay. So basically one dropper full for one pound for a medium shade. So if I'm just gonna, I, maybe I'll just do one dropper full for this. Maybe, let's see. I'll fill up my dropper and then take it from there. Okay, 
Well, I couldn't fill it all the way, but we'll just do a little bit at a time and see what it looks like. So that's about half of the dropper. And another half of the dropper. Ooh, it's science. Look how science it is. Okay, hold on. Got my, my scrap dowel. Let's stir it up and see what it looks like. Ooh, so blue. Much blue, wow. Okay, let's put more. It's not blue enough. It looks kind of green to me because, you know, whatever. It just does. So let's put more. I don't think you could put too much. I mean, maybe you could put too much. Can you put too much? Candle experts? All right. That looks quite blue. Maybe it's too dark. I don't know. It looks pretty. Does it smell any different? Mm, no, not really. Okay, let's put the lid on and wash our hands. As I was instructed to do. Okay, so my hands are clean. I did not glue myself. Points if you get the reference. Okay, so now we're going to add our fragrance. Um, I bought this artificial, I don't know if it's artificial vanilla actually. Uh, uh, contains fragrance and essential oils, so it's a, you know, crapshoot if it's real or not. Uh, that's what that means. And I don't want to put too much of this in there because I don't want my house to smell like a cookie. I'm not into that. It's not my thing. I'm more interested in my herb mix scent, but I want to kind of sweeten it up a little bit, and vanilla is one of those smells that kind of is nice with a lot of things. Um, so we're just going to put a little bit at a time. I'm going to do a half a dropper. No, not even. I'm going to do it like not even half of the dropper my first go, and let's see what it smells like. Again, this is science. Science. Mmm, I think I could put the rest of my dropper in there. Mmm. Very faint. Alright, we're going to do another half a dropper. And then we're going to call it quits on that because I really don't want to overdo that. There we go. Very nice, very nice. Okay, so... Next step is the herb mix, and I was reading about adding herbs to candles, and most of what I read said you just mix it right in. I'm a little concerned about that because I don't know, I feel like it's going to not be evenly distributed throughout my candles, but maybe it'll be fine. I don't know, let's see. Should probably get some kind of a spoon or something. Let's just let's just do it. Let's do kind of using my spoon to keep it from all pouring out like it just did. I don't think I'm gonna use my whole bag here. Although I've already used half of it. I want to have some for garnish on top. And let's just stir that in and see what happens. See, it all wants to float at the top. Well, maybe not. If I stir as I pour, I think it'll be okay. Now what the hell, let's put a little bit more. You can never have too much sage in your life, right? Mmm. Okay. So, now I'm going to pour. We're going to see. So I am going to kind of, hmm, this is cooled off enough to hold. I am going to kind of stir as I pour so that everything gets distributed. And I am going to stop right about 
there. And of course it's all floating to the top. <laughs> oh well. And that one's gonna have most of the stuff in it, it looks like, because... Yeah. That's what I thought would happen. Okay. I might actually take some out of this one, with, you know, and move it. Okay, so the way this worked out, for future reference to myself and others, doing four heaping things of wax to melt, wielded three jars. So, you know, I didn't get my fourth jar filled, but that's fine. It'll be okay. But yeah, just know that. Do an extra jar. Okay, that's it. So then you're gonna wanna let these sit until they're completely cured up. And they're gonna lighten. And uh, once they're completely cured, I guess, you will clip your wick and then you can light it and enjoy it. Um, one thing about soy candles that I learned was that the first time you burn it, you want to make sure that the whole upper surface area gets hot enough that it all melts completely because soy wax has memory. And so the next time you light it, if you don't do that, that's how you're going to get like pockets where it's, you know, wax built up on the side and it's just getting deeper and deeper. If you want it to burn completely all the way down to the bottom, you want to make sure that it completely melts on top. So that's it. I hope you got something out of this in my fumbling around. This is how I do things. So <laughs> I'm sure there are experts out there who are just like rolling their eyes, they're cringing, they're like, oh my god. Oh my god, who is this chick? But these are these are gonna be nice. I'm excited. So until next time. Ciao. Much blue, wow.